How's it going, guys? I'm Cody. This is Eli, and you are watching slash listening to Commander Cafe. Happy holidays, and as we near the end of 2018, it's that time of year where we reflect back and look at all the new cards we got for Commander this year. And so today we're going to be looking at the top 10 Commander cards printed for the first time in 2018. So to start off, we're going to list off some of our honorable mentions. Um, the first being a set of five. It is the new versions of the Elder Dragons. Yeah, I like these dragons because it they gave us new commanders that did unique things and gave us a lot of different color combinations to do those things. Mm -hmm. It's nice to bring back the, the shard colors. Mm -hmm. because we haven't had too many commanders in those recently. Yeah, and for the most part, they all do pretty unique things, like the strategist dealing with walls. We haven't really had something that cared strictly for that, aside from Doran, the Siege Tower. But mm -hmm. and Chromium is cool and unique. We have we got Nicol Bolas back. So. Each one brings their own little bit of flavor to the table. So overall, some cool stuff to build decks around um, made this year. The next one we have is Twilight Prophet. Um, overall, just a very good engine to give you card advantage throughout the game. Mm -hmm. there, there's so many cards in black that do a very similar effect. However, normally you lose the life. This one's giving you the opposite. You gain the life. Your opponents are losing the life based off of the card that you get from it. Yeah, and a lot of the effects that do that are... On enchantments, where black is better at reanimating creatures than it is, so you can get more value out of this in the long run. Yeah, so many ways to bring it back. Next up, we have Mnemonic Betrayal. Mnemonic. Mnemonic. Mnemonic Betrayal. Uh, yeah, this one was my pick, uh, one of my picks, just because the Yagma's Will, I think it is, it, this is basically a better version of that. You get access to everyone's graveyard instead of just your own. Um, so I like it a lot. I haven't gotten to play it yet, but it's one I'm excited to try. Following that, we have Jura Weatherlight Captain, which was one of the new commanders that came out of Dominaria. Yeah, she was the first red-blue is it artifact commander we had before the Commander 2017 decks came out, and I still think she may be one of the best ones. She has some good effects. Uh, definitely has become... More recently, kind of a artifact storm mm -hmm. uh, commander, but in the end, she's still in just a base artifact themed deck. She can do a lot of work by drawing a lot of cards. And our last honorable mention is your pick, Estridge Invocation. So, just an overall great utility card. Um, comes back every turn to copy any other enchantment that's out. So, whether your opponent has a Rhystic Study, Mystic Remora, um, anything that exiles someone else's stuff, you can exile that with this for a turn. Get your stuff back, let them replay theirs. <laughs> Just kind of some shenanigans to be had with this. For sure. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into the top ten. First up, we have Immortal Sun. Um, just so much utility on this artifact. Um, for six mana, you get to shut down Planeswalkers. You get extra draw. You get... Uh, discounts on your spells, and an Anthem effect. The fact that you get both card draw and ramp on one card is extremely powerful, especially in decks like Red, White, Boros, and stuff like that that have trouble getting that kind of advantage. Yeah, some good abilities thrown onto this, and while 6 mana is a little high, it makes everything else cheaper, so mm -hmm. it's, it's worth it to run it if you're going to be able to play it. Hopefully, turn 5, 6, and... And Start. beyond. Yep. <laughs> and always a great thing, especially if someone in your uh, pod has a Planeswalker deck. Oh, Super yeah. Super friends. Shuts them down hard. <laughs> Following that, we have number nine, Muldratha the Gravetide. Yeah, this one I think is just an overall very powerful commander. The reason it's not higher on the list is just because I feel like it is just that, just a, a commander. It doesn't fit inside too many decks. And the soul time makes it a little more difficult to do, but as a commander itself, very powerful. Mm -hmm. So much 
utility. You get to play any permanent type from your grave once per turn, uh, and all of the ones that, or for each permanent type. So, so many uh, graveyard shenanigans could ramp over and over with an artifact or enchantment that ramps you, or a creature even. Following that, we have number eight, Retrofitter Foundry. I like this one just because it's a, an outlet if you can create infinite mana. gives you infinite tokens, and at that point you should have a way to close out the game. Yeah. just There's only so many, especially colorless, things that you can funnel your infinite mana into. So if you do have infinite mana, this is a great one-mana artifact just to toss in your deck. Yes, yeah, cheap the... to get out there. I think the fact that it untaps itself just kind of lends itself to being broken. Mm-hmm. Next up, we have your number seven. Yes, we have Atali, Primal Storm, the big dino of the group. Probably, in my opinion, the best dino um, that was printed. The fact that we have this kind of card draw in red, um, it's amazing. You get to draw three cards from your opponents and... Cheat them out. Cheat them out. So you're getting card advantage and cheating mana cost, which are two of the most powerful busted things you can do in Commander. And red just doesn't have that many of either one, so it's nice to throw them a bone. Yeah, whether he be as a commander himself or in the 99, he's going to be good. I do someday want to build a commander around him. That would be pretty cool. Next up, we have a Golgari staple at this point. Yes. Uh, Underrealm Lich. Okay, the kind of card draw advantage that this guy gets is incredible. You're going to fill your graveyard, which decks like Marin and uh, Izoni care about and want, but you're also getting to pick the best card out of your top three to put into your hand. Um, in a lot of cases, this is strictly better than Sylvan Library. Um, Even for like Moldratha, um, there's plenty of Jun decks that would like this. Any, any deck that has black and green almost always likes the abilities thrown on this card. Yeah, it's a lot of card advantage, um, goes a long way, and the fact that it protects itself is something that I forget that it can do a lot of times, but the fact that you just pay for life and make it indestructible until end of turn, basically a fixed regenerate, um, makes it hard to deal with too. Mm -hmm. Board wipes are nothing if you can pay for life. Keep your draw and jingling. Mm -hmm. Let you dig through your deck extremely quickly. So this, for number five, we have a set of five cards that I really hope get more reprints and they get finished off with the set, but that is the multiplayer Battle Bond Lands. Yes, the ones that come in untapped as long as you have multiple opponents. These cards were clearly made for Commander um, and by far the best lands. They're basically uh, original dual lands for Commander. And the only, their sole downside is either playing them after you've gotten down to one opponent, which at that point doesn't really matter, or playing fetch lands. However, in Commander, fetch lands aren't as huge as they are in Modern other formats. And other formats. Um, so yeah, the fact that we have budget dual lands basically available to us is amazing. I'm so glad they printed these this year. Yeah, they've been going up in price, but I'm so happy that I have at least one set of them, and mm -hmm. I'm probably going to pick up more even before it gets too... They raise up too high. Yeah, I'll have to get more, too. Number four. We have Storm the Vault. Uh, I love artifacts. Uh, I Right now, I'm running a Tano's deck um, with Red Blue, and this card is amazing in any artifact deck. Um the fact that they kind of reprinted a extremely high dollar land for artifacts. Uh, I forgot Terlarian West. No, not Terlarian West. Which one is it? Uh, Art is Terlarian Academy, which, which is banned in Commander. So the fact that we have a banned card that's kind of fixed because normally you flip this on the first go in an artifact theme deck is is pretty good. Yeah. So Brea can use it. All of the new red, blue artifact commanders can use it. Um, and just even decks that don't have a entire artifact theme, if they're running three or more colors, then they probably have some signets out. They can flip this after an attack or two, and it's still a land that provides well over the amount that a basic would normally do. 
Yeah, you're easily tapping this for five plus mana, so mm -hmm. great card. Especially since it gives you the treasures, which at that point you're not even using them to sack. You're using mm -hmm. them to power up um, the upgraded Storm the Vault. Number three on the list is one of the few cards that we have on here from Commander 2018. Yeah, I know a lot of people were kind of lukewarm on the whole Commander 2018 set. Um, looking through for this video for the top 10, I have to say I kind of was too. There's not a whole lot of those cards I'm playing, but this is one that I want multiple copies of, and that is Wing Grace's Judgment. Instant speed can hit one permanent of any player, or no, one non-land permanent, but that's still just amazing value for five mana. You get two at in most cases, hit three things, um, destroy them. They can be an enchantment, an artifact, creature, anything that is a threat, you can get rid of it with this. And that's three total things. That's a, a great value, especially at instant speed. Yeah, instant speed, I think, is what makes this. If this was sorcery, I would not be as hot on this. It probably wouldn't even make my top ten. Mm -hmm. the, the ability to play it at flash is just so amazing. Next up, we have a card that's actually seeing a lot of play in standard as well. We have Cleansing Nova. Yes, uh, I love this card. The more I use it, I have a deck that runs it in standard. Uh, the downside is it is run in standard, so the price is creeping up there. But the fact that you have the option of the flexibility to destroy either creatures or enchantments... Is, a, is amazing, especially since we have the enchantment commander deck came out this year. So we do have a lot of decks running those enchantments um, and artifacts. So we got the artifact and enchantment deck. This deals with both of those decks extremely well and is just a five mana wrath, which I think five mana wraths are for the most part actually better than a lot of the four mana wraths. Mm -hmm. That extra flexibility is just yeah. well worth it to me. It's a one mana cheaper austere command, and uh, while austere command gives slightly more flexibility, this goes in so much easier, and I believe still might have a lower price tag. Although, don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> and our number one, of course, one of the most looked forward to cards of Guilds of Ravnica is Assassin's Trophy. This is. A strict upgrade to Putrefy. This card is... I've been fortunate to open about three or four copies of it um, from PAX, and it's replaced all my Putrefies and all my decks. Um, just more versatility and less mana. Yeah, with, with how heavily black and green are played, and with white having a number of drawbacks, running things like Path to Exile can be a little bit difficult. Um and having more flexible removal in two commonly played colors makes this a major staple at this point. Especially now that, thanks to the command zone, we know that if you're playing white, you're automatically at a disadvantage. <laughs> um, so you want to be in Golgari. Gives you a better chance of winning, and this is the card for you. <laughs> uh, another time we'll actually discuss some more about the, <laughs> the win statistics from that episode of theirs, uh, which if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, if you haven't seen it, I don't know why you're watching our video, but... <laughs> they are a bit more well-known than us. Um, as always, all of these cards are available at our not-quite-sponsor, <laughs> Card Kingdom. So if you're buying any of these cards, if you like any of these cards, you need more copies... Go to Card Kingdom and in the comment section, let them know that we sent you and hopefully we can drive them into giving us a sponsor some point down the road. <laughs> Otherwise, in the comments below, let us know what your favorite card of 2018 is. Is there anything that we missed that you think should be on the list? Um, what cards on our list do you disagree with? Um, I want to know. Uh, because, hey, if you don't think Assassin Trophy is good, you're wrong. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you think that maybe some of the new planeswalkers were better we might question your judgment but give us an explanation because we want to hear your thoughts we want to hear why certain cards might be better and just yeah 
yeah, maybe it's just our meta specific that we think these cards are good. Um, so if you have a different meta that other cards work better in, let us know.